All right. Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today, I am here with Rodman Schley. Rodman, welcome to the show, man. So awesome to have you. Now, you're kidding me? This is incredible. I love coming on shows like this, talking to people, teaching, but also learning. I get so much out of coming onto these podcasts. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I, you and I, well, first, I should give a shout out to Jessica and the folks over at the podcast guest platform because those guys, I love Jessica. Uh, she's like become this advocate for me since I started doing this podcast and we've got to know each. She's always reaching out to me going, Kev, you should talk with so-and-so about being a guest on your podcast. And, and, uh, and that's how you and I met. And I'll tell you, anybody that comes through Jessica, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, she has never steered me wrong. I had never had a bad experience when I follow up with anybody that Jessica suggests to. Me. And so I just want to honor that. And then you and I, we got to connect last week. And, and it wasn't, well, so I'll just put it in perspective here. Today is Tuesday. You and I spoke last Thursday. And we had an amazing conversation getting to know each other and stuff. And then you were like, you, you were, we were talking about your books and stuff. And you're like, well, Kev, I'm going to send you my books. And so like, like just like they, these came in over the weekend. And I'm like, dang, Rodman don't waste no time. And I ain't going to lie. Your book, The Outlier Mindset, I am like totally stoked to read this because it's all about running a business that is based around our purpose. And, and that is like so in alignment with me. And I'm just, so Rodman, thank you. I really appreciate that. And yeah, of uh, course. I am just totally stoked to have this conversation with you today. And so what I want to do is I just want to start off by turning it over to you so that we can start by setting a little bit of context. So you can share, you know, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work that you do and the impact you're making. And we'll just start off there, Rodman. Yeah, you know, for me, so I'm an entrepreneur by heart. I've always been an entrepreneur. Love it. Love getting up in the morning, love building businesses, love doing what I'm doing. Uh, but there was a point in time where I wasn't doing what I was doing. I was leading with profits instead of purpose. So I literally had 13 companies going at once. It was that rich dad, poor dad philosophy of, you know, I'm just going to look at revenues. I'm going to create these passive revenue streams. I'm going to get up. I'm going to take my wheelbarrow. I'm going to go down to the bank every morning. And I'm going to make my deposits and life is going to be good. But what I was really missing was that these things that I was doing was not aligned with who I was inside. Yeah. It wasn't aligned with my purpose. It wasn't aligned with what made me feel good. So instead of getting up in the morning and feeling really good about what I was doing, I was getting up in the morning, dreading the work that I was going to have to do throughout the day because it wasn't aligned with what I wanted to be doing. It wasn't aligned with how I wanted to be spending my time. So there I was with 13 companies and this big web that I had weaved for myself. And I got to a point where uh, I don't want to call it a, a total meltdown, but I got to the point where I just couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want to do it anymore. So I got up one morning and decided to start unweaving that web, start keeping the things that were meant for me, things that were important to me, and start to get rid of the things or sell the things that weren't meant for me and, or meant to be in my life. And so at that point, that's kind of where I discovered the joy of being an entrepreneur. When it wasn't just about the profit, it was about the purpose, it was about the passion. But for me now, what I want to be able to do is you're always best suited to serve the person that you once were. I know there are a lot of people out there that are the same way. They start thinking with that money first. How much money can I make? How much money can I make? How much profit is there going to be? But I want to help those people and I want to serve those people who are sitting there going, you know what? I'm not going to build businesses based on just profit. I want to make sure that what I'm doing is aligned with who I am as a person what my purpose is in life, because I want to help them to avoid those same mistakes. Did they make a lot of money along the way? There was a lot of money to be made, and yes, but at the same time, was it worth it? No. I make far more money now that I'm aligned with my purpose, doing the things that I love, and doing a small subset of those things, just looking and being uber-focused on what I'm doing. Yeah. And that's what the outlier mindset is about. It's about helping lead with purpose and with passion, and then the fundamentals behind that outlier, what they need to do every single morning to get up and be different, 
don't be within that curve. You know, there's that big bell curve in life. And the majority of people are in that big portion of that bell curve. You got the people who are not great people out to the left. Those are the outliers that you don't want to be, but you've got the incredible people out to the right. And those are the people that you want to be. You want to be an outlier on the outside, on the right side of that bell curve. And yeah. that's the types of people that I'm trying to help. So you can get out of that bell curve, get to the right side and be aligned with your purpose in life. Because, you know, we've only got one shot at this thing. We've got one shot at life and every single day keeps ticking. You and I are talking just the other day. I think uh, you told me you were in your 50s. I'm in my 50s. I hope that's not a trade secret or something. You don't want me to tell people. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, it's one of those things where it was like this. I was 20 years old yesterday. My yeah. kids were babies yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Spend those moments doing the things that you want to be doing and loving in life. Otherwise, you're losing out. And the one thing that I'm trying to solve for for people is at the end of that day, when you get to the end of that life, when you're sitting there on that deathbed, you're not sitting there with regret because yeah. there's nothing worse in life than looking back at the things that you wish you would have done or had done differently with a lot of regret. Yeah. And so that's what I'm trying to solve for. Wow. So when you were focused on profit first, you said you were running 13 companies. Mm. And now that you're focused on, you know, what, what we'll call impact first and purpose first and all of that, um, what, what does life look like now? How many companies are you running today? I got about three. Got three so, days. So, and, you know, and that's down to three. <laughs> I know. And it's perfect and so much better. And you're, yeah. you're right. When you're talking about, uh, you know, how you feel when you get up and you're working on three things that you love versus 13 things that you don't, yeah. it's a significant change yeah. in how you feel in life. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I, I, when, when you and I spoke last week and so much of what you were sharing, I was like, man, Rodman, you are preaching to the choir. Cause I am like, so, I mean, this is describing me. And I, I used to be the same exact way, you know, and, and now, you know, there's way less on my plate because I've got focused, for one, on who I'm most valuable to. I used to, I mean, I used to just love entrepreneurs because they, they, because they became an entrepreneur. You know, anybody who would become an entrepreneur, they got my respect for sure. But trying to help every entrepreneur, I am not most valuable to every entrepreneur. But yet, I used to try to just do the heavy lifting and just help. And because I loved them and it was so painful because mm -hmm. I was not operating in my unique ability and God given gifts, you know? And, and yeah. now that I just stay in that zone and I've got really, I know who exactly that I'm most valuable to and everybody who doesn't fit that, it's okay. I just politely say no and try to help them by referring them to somebody else or what have you. But man, talk about bandwidth clearing. And now you're just focused on that. It's like, man, it, I can't even describe the difference, but it's massive. It's massive. And yeah. One of the biggest lessons that people need to learn as an entrepreneur is it's okay to say no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Because we look at opportunities, entrepreneurs, their eyes are wide open all the time. And they've got all this stuff coming at them all the time. Try this, try that. Here you can make money doing this, doing that. But you know, the thing about it is, is again, a lot of these things aren't meant for you. So you've got to be able to really look at them. And boy, sometimes it's hard to say no. Yeah. Sometimes that opportunity might look really appealing or really good. But you got to take a look at your superpowers and who you are and what you're best at. And then what aligns with you and always know how to say no. And I, I've got a checkbox system. I call it my, my sacred checkboxes. And for me, when I'm getting up in the morning, if somebody brings me something and it doesn't check one of my sacred checkboxes, I'm a no, I'm a hard no. And I'm, I, I stick to it. And there's a lot of things that come to me, a lot of opportunities and not to, to not be able to say no. That's where you really can get drugged down. And then all of a sudden you're not seeing the light anymore. Then all of a sudden you're not aligned with your purpose anymore. And then you start spiraling to where you don't want to spiral to. Yeah. You want to start climbing. You don't want to spiral. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. So now that we've got a little bit of context set here, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. I'm going to reiterate the question for the benefit of our listeners. So Rodman, have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And I'm just really excited to hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationships. Well, relationships are so important. I mean, I would put that almost at the top of the list, right? And you and I had this conversation uh, off camera and I told you that I'm amazed. I mean, I'm thrilled every single day when I get up, I'm just amazed with the quality of the people that I have in my life. Now, I don't know if it's because I attracted, I don't know if it's because uh, they, they find my personality and they just like what I'm doing. I don't know what it is, but every single day, and I tell my wife and kids all the time, like we are so blessed to be surrounded by the, the grouping of people that we're surrounded by. Incredible yeah. professionals, incredible artists, incredible people that are doing these huge things in life, just amazing things, right? And for me, yeah, there's been a couple of people along the way that have been very inspirational to me. Um, you know, and I could go back to when I was 18 years old and going through through college. I had a guy who's a 70-year-old man uh, who used to buy and flip real estate. And, you know, he got to the point where physically he couldn't do the work anymore. I said, listen, I'll train you. I'll come in. I will teach you how to do this work. I'll put the money in to buy the house. I will train you how to do the work, and you're not going to split the profits. That guy was so instrumental in who I am as a real estate person today. He taught me so much. My wife, anytime I'm doing it, she's always like, well, how are you so handy around here? It's like, well, you know, I had a great mentor. But, yeah. you know, that's an example of a person. But the tribe of people who have come in and out of my life, the, the number of the different people who have come in and had an influence with me or inspired me or moved me is a huge pool. It's a vast number of people. It's a collection of, of different mindsets. It's a collection of different ways of thinking. It's, a, it's a, just kind of like leadership qualities. And I could probably look at my whole pool, my, my network and start saying, okay, I got a lot of my leadership from them. Or I got a lot of who I am from him. Or I got so, so much of the way I think about this from her. And, you know, it can go on and on and on. But even the people that you don't have directly in your life, there's a guy, uh, I'm sure you know who he is, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Uh, oh, that yeah. Was a, yeah, incredible man, right? Uh, very inspirational. Yeah. But I got a copy of his book called Your Erroneous Zones when I was 15 years old. Somebody put that book into my hands and said, you really need to read this. Now I'm a 15-year-old kid. You know, nonfiction is not really my thing, but I pull it and I open it up and I read it. And I've probably read that book maybe 20 times plus over my lifetime. I read it, reread it, read it, reread it, because the words in there were so instrumental to who I am today. Now, yeah. is Dr. Wayne Dyer in my network of people? No, of course he's not. But do his words resonate with me? Do they fill me up? Do they, do they show up in who I am today? All the time. Yeah. So people can be in your tribe, but it's not just the people that are immediately in your tribe. That's right. That's right. That can have a difference yeah. on your life. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when you're, I, and I love Wayne Dyer and I love listening to Wayne Dyer and I've watched lots of video of him over the years. And, uh, and, you know, and another one of those guys for me, as you're telling that story, I'm thinking about, there's this guy, Bob Burke. And he wrote this book called The Go Giver, and he's got a he's got a co-author with him. I'm, I'm just drawing a blank on his co-author's name, but I don't know how long that book came out. But it was about nine or ten years ago that an entrepreneur friend gave me a copy of that book, and and when he gave it to me, he's like, Kevin, do not let this be one of those books that you get given that you just tuck away and never read. He's like, I'm giving this to you because I believe it is in such alignment with you and who you are that I think this is going to be really impactful for you. And that's why I'm giving this to you. And so because he shared that, I'm like, well, all right, then I'm going to read this dog on book. And, and the go-giver is a very quick read. And it's a, such a great story. And, and my friend Bradros was so right on the mark. That book, had such an impact, like you shared, 
I have probably read that book nine or 10 times in the last nine years or so. And, oh and it is such an emotional experience every single time I read that book because in the last nine or 10 years, I've grown so much as a person. And what that book means to me today is so much more powerful than what it meant to me nine years ago when it was first mm. given to me. And, and I actually had the opportunity and the pleasure and the honor to interview Bob Burke for this podcast, which was way cool too. Oh, and, that is way cool. And, uh, and so, you know, you're right the, that these influential people in our lives, these, these, these relationships that we have, they can, yes, they can absolutely be per people that we know and we interact with and have conversations with and have a relationship with, but they can totally also be people that we don't have a personal relationship with too and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny, Kevin, because you say that and I can almost reach it on my desk. I've got the go-giver sitting on my desk. It was next in my reading queue. I have not read that book yet. Oh, you have it? Oh, man. No, it's next you'll... in my queue. I'm going to pick that book up now. And I'm going to start on it tonight because somebody said it the same thing that you did about the book. And so it's got to be a great book because the two people who have told me you and this other gentleman uh, are, are peak performers. So I know that it's got to be a good book. Oh, I, I am stoked to talk with you after you read it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. You know, Kevin, think, though, think about if those people didn't write those books. Right. I mean, people always have this information and this knowledge and this experience that somebody needs to hear. Yeah. And I always tell people, write the book, write your book, go out there, take what you've got upstairs and share it. It's because you can have an impact, not just with a person. You might be able to impact me right now, but if you can take that same knowledge and impact a million people, that's a gift. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask you a little bit deeper question. So if you look back through uh, you know, the the people that you know, the relationships you have, the people that have had a profound impact on you and on your life and on your business. What is one example of where you personally got to make a really substantial impact where you're just like, wow, that was amazing. And you also know that that would have never happened if not for your relationship with whoever it was. Mm. So an impact that I had on somebody else or the impact that I had on me? The it impact that me. you had on somebody else or a group of somebody else or whatever that looked like. Yeah, you know, for me, um, every time that I look at, at impact and, and leadership and trying to put back into the world, you know, for me, it's kind of like, I do love a lot of one-on-one -on -one work but I also love to be able to take information and knowledge and everything that's built into me and give it back in, in, into big masses, right? I mean, you know, for an example, um, back in 2009, uh, you know, my wife and I were doing a lot of sustainability work, helping people understand what sustainability was about in urban areas. And we'd go out and we would, you know, my, my wife would teach a lot of these things and help people get an understanding of it. Um, but I always told us, it's like, well, what if we could take the same knowledge and information and impart it to a million people, not just impart it to one person at a time. So we actually developed a television show called Urban Conversion. Uh, some of your listeners might have seen this on PBS. It still airs nationally. Uh, okay. But what it does is, um, you know, it teaches people, uh, a lot of people, how to be a little bit more responsible, right? So for me, when I think about impact, yeah, having impact on a single person, I'm sure there's a lot of people who I've had really good impacts on on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, you know, I, I could probably start down a list of people who say, yes, he's been very influential. Um, but for me, the proudest moments are making the large changes. How can we make significant big changes in what we're offering and what we're putting into the world? And that's a paradigm shift because a lot of people think about, uh, you know, I'm training this person, which is great, by the way, the, the, the people that I've trained over the years and the people that I've taught over the years, there's nothing like sitting in a room with those people, having them looking at you, knowing that you had such a big part of their lives that you were able to come in and have such an influence and give them so much knowledge and so much information to get them to where they were. You, you helped 
um, you know, put food on their tables. You help them uh, feed their families. You help them put a roof over their head. And now they're out there taking all that incredible knowledge and all that thing that you put into them and they're doing it on their own. And then they're passing it on to yeah. the next person. They're passing it on to that next set of people. That's amazing. Yeah. But being able to take your knowledge and put it out into the world. And that's what I tell people all the time. If you've got it up here, somebody needs that from you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs you to bring that to them. Somebody's sitting there going, I wish I knew this. I wish I knew what he knew. And it's a tragedy if you're not taking that knowledge and that information and all that inspirational uh, information that you have and feeding it into people so that they can go out into the world and make big change too. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what's so great about knowledge. And that's what's so great about influencing and being a part because there's negative influences out there too, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. And those are the ones you see that happening too. But that's why we need so many of the positive people in the world who know how to make really good change and positive influence in the world to really be speaking up, to really be putting themselves out there, to really be inspiring and influencing the next generation of people coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is powerful. And, you know, being a father, you know, my, uh, one of my sons, and we've got seven kids. And, uh, uh, when I met my wife in 03, she had been a single mom for 10 years raising the four older kids. And their dad mm has -hmm. not been in the picture for years. In fact, uh, he passed away four years ago. And and all those four older kids, they're all married. They got kids of their own. I've got six grandchildren currently and more coming, you know. Um, and, and all four of those kids call me dad, which is mm -hmm. really awesome, you know. And then we've got two more that uh, we Brock, we, uh, he, he just turned 16. Ellie just turned 14 and Abby, uh, we adopted her when she was three and she just turned 13. So she's been our daughter for 10 years. now. And those younger kids, you know, uh, Brock just turned 16 and getting his license. And now, you know, Man, the kids got all this newfound freedom, and I don't see him hardly at all now. It's like it's like it's. I, I used to see him way more when I'm driving him to everything, to his football practice, and this and that, and 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 now he drives himself, and I'm like, man, and and I'm also thinking, where did 16 years go? You know, mm -hmm. and yeah, we did. Talk, I mean, heck, I'll be, I'll be. I'll be 59 years old in one month from tomorrow. <laughs> oh my. And I'm just like, wow. And, and, you know, in many ways, I feel like at 59 years old, I'm just now really catching my groove. I'm just now really starting to figure things out. And, and like the last 59 years, they've been good. But I'll tell you, my biggest impact is going to be made in the years coming forward, you know, because the foundation is set now. And, uh, and, you know, and, and you're right, we have, you know, the opportunity to make such a big impact. And what I have found for me personally is, is, you know, it, it's about who, who I get to be of service to, who I am most valuable to, and who they are, is what allows me to impact millions of people's lives and stuff. And when, with, with technology, and with resources available to us today, Man, that is so doable for anybody who wants to, who wants to like, you got a purpose? My goodness. Today in this age, it, it, so much easier than it used to be way back when, you know? And uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I would argue that a million people or millions is probably an underestimated because you might go in and influence that one person who goes out and influences a million people. Absolutely. Or you might influence Absolutely. those five people, or you might do the 10. But the thing is, is your influence goes through. It might be your children. Yeah. Your influence on your children might carry through to millions of people. So yes, your words, your actions, what you do every single day, how you show up in the world has an impact on millions, whether you do it right or you do it wrong. Yeah. So do it right, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Rodman, I, I know that there's some entrepreneurs listening to this, thinking to themselves, man, Kev, uh, 
I really like Rodman. I love the way Rodman shows up. Uh, for them, if, if they wanted to follow up, find more information about you, the work you're doing, what's the best way to do that? Any websites, any resources we can share and include with the show notes? Yeah, come find me. Come find me. I'm everywhere. So go Rodman.com. Really easy if you want to find me oh, on I the like web. That. Yeah, very, kind of like GoDaddy, you know. Uh -huh. Nobody can say my last name right or spell my last name. So go Rodman, it is. And I love to engage with entrepreneurs. So if anybody wants to engage with me too, by all means, send me an email, uh, reach out to me. But you can also hit me up on social media. Uh, all of my handles on social media, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, and such, they're all at Go Rodman. So it's Perfect. easy to find. And you know you can find my book on there. As a matter of fact, you can find both of my books on there. But I love to talk to people. I love to talk to entrepreneurs. I love to hear their stories. So by all means, don't just come and hit up my website without reaching out to me. Come over to my website and then hit me up too and uh, and engage with me. I'd love to love to hear your story. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'll tell you, I really appreciate you taking the time to have this conversation, Aram. Anything that any last thing that you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? You know, the only thing that I would say, get up tomorrow. If you're not doing what you're feeling like you've been meant to do in life, start there, figure it out, lead with purpose, and then lead others with service. Be a selfless servant, and you're always going to be taken care of, especially if you're leading with what's important with you. So number one, if you get up tomorrow and you're not feeling it, you don't like it, you're on rinse and repeat, you're getting up, hitting that alarm, you're getting out of bed, you're doing something you don't want to be doing, getting home, going to bed, getting up and do it over and over again. Cause that's the majority of people in that big curve. Yeah. 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 Start with purpose, get up, figure out what's important to you, what's meaningful to you. And then start surrounding yourself with the people who support that and are meant for you to be in your tribe. And you're going to do great in life, man. Amen. Amen. Well, Rodman, thanks again for taking the time to have this conversation. I really appreciate you. And I'm excited to get this out there. Yeah, read that book. Let me know what you think. I want to hear Absolutely. your questions. Absolutely.